There are two questions about raw feeding large dogs that I get most frequently. The first question people ask is, how do I make homemade raw dog food in bulk? In other words, big dogs eat a lot, and the process of figuring out what to feed and how much to feed of it sounds very complicated and overwhelming. The second question I hear often from dog owners is, how do I feed a raw diet to large dogs efficiently without it taking up half my day? I get it, we are all busy and the thought of every meal requiring an hour or more of your time is simply out of the question for most dog owners, including myself. If you have these questions and are looking for how to make raw dog food for your large dog and feed it as fast and efficiently as scooping kibble into a bowl, you are going to love this video. Today, I'm going to share with you my method for meal prepping two weeks of homemade raw meals for two adult Mastiffs. This video will provide you the visual and a great summary of my process. However, I want to let you know on the outset that this is one video where you absolutely must read the blog post that goes with it. It. In that blog post are numerous weight and calorie calculations and likely answers to many of your questions about raw feeding your dog. The link to that comprehensive blog post and everything we discuss in this video are in the description below. In case you are new here, my name is Stephanie, AKA Big Dog Mom. And on this channel, I provide content and resources with a mission to help you and your big dog live your best life together. I'm thrilled you are here with me today and hope to earn your subscription to this channel and a thumbs up in the end. All right, let's get started. Let me start by telling you how this video will be structured because we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. After I share a few high level priorities you should consider when it comes to raw feeding, I'm going to show you step by step how I plan out and meal prep 15 days of raw meals for my two Mastiffs, Junior and Sully. Along the way, I'm going to be sharing with you the specific use cases for structuring raw dog food meals this way, and at the end, the critically important caveats you need to be aware of before attempting this at home. My rant comes at the end, so you won't want to miss that. If you are ready, let's start with a few priorities you need to consider before you begin. First, what are your nutritional goals for your dog? Is your dog at a proper weight or can she stand to lose a few pounds? Are you feeding a puppy or a mature adult dog? These questions will help inform your decisions when we get to calculating what and how much raw food to feed your dog. My goal right now for Sully and Junior is to adjust their caloric intake to account for their advanced age and lower activity level. Okay, second, variety in a raw diet is absolutely critical. We've all heard stories of people mistakenly believing that a diet of whole or ground chicken is a complete and balanced raw diet. The truth is, a raw diet of just chicken is neither complete nor balanced. The key is providing multiple protein sources and varying this monthly or as you are placing your bulk raw food orders. For this particular meal prep and bulk order, I already had some beef on hand, and unfortunately sardines were out of stock when I placed my order. So, in order to vary my protein sources while being mindful of cost, I ordered turkey, pork, and dark meat chicken because it was on sale, and decided to feed salmon on the back end versus prepping the sardine with each meal. You will learn much more about this process in just a minute. Okay, third, you will want to determine how much freezer space you have to store all of your raw dog food. Here are some questions you should consider. How much space do you have in your freezer that you can dedicate to your dogs? If you choose to prep meals ahead of time, do you have space for the containers? <laughs> and how much space do you have in your refrigerator to thaw frozen raw dog food? Fourth, everyone's favorite subject, money. You will want to figure out where raw feeding fits into your budget. Raw feeding large dogs can definitely break the bank if you aren't careful. In the blog post linked below, I share a few tips on how to save money as a raw feeder. I'm happy to do a dedicated video on this particular topic if you would like that, so let me know in the comments below. The last factor I consider is my current inventory of raw meat and whether I can find a free source of anything here locally. As far as inventory for this particular raw meal prep you're about to see, I already had kidney, tripe, liver, and plenty of raw meaty bones on hand. The kidney and tripe I had left over from a previous raw order, while the liver came from the cow we got from my husband's brother. They threw the liver in actually for free when we ordered the cow. The raw meaty bones came from a local Amish farm that 
we buy raw milk and eggs from. So those were free as well. Now that we have a foundation from which to start, let's begin with my step-by-step -step process for how to meal prep two weeks of homemade raw dog food. There are 11 steps in total. Are you ready? Okay, step number one involves just a little bit of math. Here's a quick explanation of how to calculate how many calories you should be feeding your dog per day. You will take your dog's current weight divided by 2.2. That will give you your dog's weight in kilograms. You will take that number and raise it to the 0.75 power. You multiply that number times 70. And then lastly, you will multiply that number times a unique factor that is determined based on your particular dog and his or her energy needs. Here is a chart from perfectlyrawsome.com. I will put a link to them in the description below. They are an amazing resource for all things raw feeding. So when I do the math for Sully, using a starting weight of 200 pounds, his ideal weight is a little closer to 195, and a factor of 1.4 for inactive, his daily energy needs are 2,885 calories. Junior, on the other hand, while I would like to see him lose a few pounds to reduce the stress on his hips, he is actually at the right weight for his bone and frame. He is neutered, and when not crazy chasing a ball or playing, he's pretty low activity. So for him, his starting weight is 235 with a goal closer to 225. I used a factor of 1.6 and got a daily energy need of 3,721 calories. Now, to transfer the daily energy needs into how much raw food to feed, you will need this conversion. 19 to 20 ounces of raw food equates to about 1,000 calories. While you certainly could simply use this conversion and calculate the weight of raw food needed per day based on this, most raw feeders actually use another method, the percentage of body weight method. So I'm gonna show this to you now. This is step two. If you follow the advice of many raw feeders, they will tell you to feed 2.5% of your dog's body weight in raw per day. Let's see what happens when I use just this method for Junior and Sully. If I fed them both this 2.5% of body weight, Junior would be getting an excess of 1.1 pounds of raw food, and Sully would be getting a whopping 1.6 pounds more than he should be. This would roughly exceed their daily caloric requirement by over 1,000 calories on average. Remember when we talked about nutritional goals just a minute ago, I told you that my goal is maintenance and a little weight loss for both Junior and Sully. Because of that, I am feeding 2% of body weight for Junior and 1.7% for Sully. I have found these percentages to be about right for my boy's age and activity level. In order to verify that these are the correct amounts, we can do a quick check against our calculations in step one. As you can see, these percentages come very close to the right amount in terms of their daily energy requirement or calories for Sully and Junior. When raw feeding, I do the math both ways using a percent of weight and their daily calorie amount. I then double check that these two numbers are close. I err on the side of underfeeding versus overfeeding according to these numbers. In other words, I want my weights for raw meat, bone, and organ to fall under what my calorie calculations say they should be. Not by a huge amount, just a little under is totally fine with me. Since I am adding the bone as I feed it, my weights fluctuate, and I need a little wiggle room. So I hope that makes sense. Moving on to step number three, determine the number of days you are prepping raw meals for. What I will show you is how I prepped 15 days of meals for Junior and Sully, but you can do any length of time you want and have the resources for. Steps one and two gave me the total amount of raw dog food I need to feed in pounds and ounces for both dogs. Now I can multiply this times the number of days I would like meals prepped for. This gives you one big number to work from, the total weight of raw food needed for however many days you are prepping meals for. In my case, 15 days or a little over two weeks. At this stage, I also break the total amount of raw food needed per dog down into how much that will be in meat, bone, liver, and other secreting organs. And that's going to be 80%, 10%, 5%, 5% respectively for each of those components. Now that I figured out the total weight of what I need for meat, bone, and organ, I went to my freezer to assess what I had on hand and what I still needed to order. For this particular raw meal prep, I had enough organ, liver, tripe, heart, and bone for both dogs, so I knew I didn't need to order those items. At this point, I was ready to place my order, which is step five. In my experience, every raw food co-op operates a little differently. However, there are some consistencies. 
First, orders are usually placed monthly. So for this raw food order, all I needed was the meat and the fatty fish. Unfortunately, the supplier was out of sardines, but they were having a huge sale on dark meat chicken. I normally don't feed chicken, so I was happy to try this new item for a few weeks. Again, variety is key. So, as you can see, my order consisted of 30 pounds of ground pork, 36 pounds of ground turkey, and 40 pounds of dark meat chicken. While I waited about a week for my co-op pickup day, I made sure I had enough containers ready to go. Step number six is to purchase and or prep raw meal containers. You can see that I'm using 64 ounce plastic containers for these meals. I will put links to the ones I am using in the description below. Well, I purchased mine from Walmart and Amazon, but there are probably higher quality options out there. That said, these worked perfectly for meal and they're inexpensive. Since I added the raw meaty bone, fatty fish, and supplements on the back end, in other words, on the day I was feeding it, these size containers worked perfectly. Finally, my order came and was ready for pickup. These days are Junior and Sully's absolute favorite days. They can smell what's coming and that it's all for them. <laughs> so step number eight is when the real work begins. We are ready to get these raw dog food meals made. I laid out all of the containers for Junior and Sully. You will see Junior's stash throughout this video. Sully's raw meals are actually behind me on the other counter that you can't see. Since I knew how much total meat I needed to add across all 15 days of meals, I broke down my raw, my bulk raw meat and began to separate it between both dogs so that 54 pounds went to Junior and approximately 40 pounds went to Sully. Since I ordered 106 pounds of meat and had tripe and heart on hand, I had more than enough. So let me be clear. This is just one way of doing this. In the past, I have weighed everything that I put into the container to make sure that my daily rations of each ingredient were precise. In this case, however, I figured that as long as the total across 15 days was accurate, what the boys received each day was less critical. Some days they would get a little more, some days a little less. I subtracted 20 pounds of meat from what I got from the co-op, which left me approxim with approximately eight pounds of heart and tripe to add to their meals. Again, I separated this between Junior and Sully and put a little into each meal. Secreting organ and liver are added in a similar fashion. I started with a total amount of kidney and liver needed for each dog and then added a roughly even amount to each meal. Keep in mind, kidney is not the only secreting organ I feed. It was just what I had on hand for this particular meal prep. To ensure your weights are accurate, you are going to need a good counter scale. I will include a link to the one I have and really like in the description below. So now that all of the containers are filled, I'm ready for step number nine. You will see that I am labeling Junior's and Sully's containers with a basic Sharpie. <laughs> not the best method, but keep in mind, if you are prepping raw food meals for someone else to feed, or if you plan to add to your raw dog food inventory with more meals with different ingredients, you will want to be much more detailed with your labels. In either case, I recommend you use actual labels and note your dog's name, uh, unless you only have one dog, the date the meal was prepared, the approximate total weight in the container, the ingredients of what's in there, and what else needs to be added for completion. But remember, these meals as is are not complete until you add a few more things, bone being the most important. So once your containers are labeled, into the freezer they go. When you are ready to feed your dog his lovingly prepared raw meal, you are ready for step 10. Thawing raw dog food can take a couple of days or more. I normally keep two or three days worth of food, um, so that equates to about four to six containers since I'm feeding Junior and Sully once a day, um, in my refrigerator and I rotate more from the freezer as I use what's thawed using a first in first out method. You will want to make sure you have a rotation of raw meaty bones thawing as well, which you will be adding to your dog's raw meals. And finally, we are at the last and arguably the most important step, step 11. Remember, these meals are not complete as is. I try and keep the weight of bone content I add to about 10 to 15% of Junior and Sully's raw food intake. In my experience, this is not an exact science, so I don't overthink it. If they get a little more bone one day, I give them a little less the next. 
I watch their stool and adjust as needed. Now, if you are feeding a growing large or giant breed puppy, I want you to go to the blog post in the description for all of the guidance on raw feeding large and giant breed puppies. You can see here that I add in quite a few things in order to complete my dog's raw meals. This is not an all-inclusive list. With the exception of several foods and supplements such as omega-3 or fatty fish, um, daily dog, my probiotic, and organic sea kelp, which I feed every day, the other items are varied and given as treats or just a few days a week with their food. Again, I don't overthink this part. Moderation is key and I strive for variety and balance over time. There are several use cases for this method of raw feeding a dog. Number one, travel convenience. Whether your dog is going to be with you or she will be in the care of a friend or a dog sitter, this method can quickly help ensure your dog is well fed while you are on the go. Number two, it's a time saver. Great for multi big dog households. Raw dog food meal prep can be extremely time consuming and that's a common reason many big dog owners opt for a quality processed kibble diet. Convenience is everything. Number three, cleanliness. You can reduce the mess and the spread of bacteria. So I'm not going to go into great detail on this one as I will be doing an entire video on this topic. But for now, one of the biggest advantages of doing a bulk raw meal prep like this is that it's cleaner. What do I mean? Because you are only dealing with raw meat in bulk one time, your daily meal times will be fairly clean comparatively. This in turn reduces the spread of bacteria and the risk of infection because anytime you're dealing with raw meat, there are bacteria. So no matter what method you use, you want to ensure you are sanitizing your counters, your containers and dog bowls and wiping your dogs when they are done. All of these tasks should be considered SOP standard operating procedure when it comes to raw feeding your dog. More on this in a future video. So let me know what questions or concerns you have about this particular topic in the comments below. The other reason you might consider this type of bulk prep is to save space either in your freezer or refrigerator. When I don't take the time to meal prep in bulk, I end up having numerous bags of each item in a huge silver bowl in my refrigerator thawing all the time. I rotate freezer bags of raw ingredients in and out out as my mastiffs eat each day, so that ginormous bowl is always there. It inevitably gets dirty and must be cleaned daily. It is heavy to carry in and out of our outdoor refrigerator, and it takes up nearly an entire shelf of space, much to the dismay of my entire family, who also must use that refrigerator. Having a steady rotation of nice little containers that are clean and prepped ahead of time makes my routine as a raw feeding big dog mom a million times easier. And lastly, freezing pre-prepped raw dog food meals can be stored for at least a year or longer, giving you ready to go meals on hand when you need them. Just be sure to label your containers as I mentioned earlier. Okay, now that we've covered the meat of it, <laughs> it's time for my rant. Here we go. I can just hear some of you now watching this. Perhaps you have been a raw feeder for years and years and feel you have built up some expertise on the subject. Perhaps you have taken canine nutrition courses and believe that what I just shared is somehow falling short of some prescribed ideal. Perhaps you are screaming at YouTube right now watching this. I have just a few things to say to you and to every dog owner out there who simply wants to learn more about raw feeding their dog. First, put simply, there is no one size fits all dog food recipe or raw feeding method that will work for all dog owners. The fact is, no raw food for dogs recipe is perfect or perfectly balanced no matter which method you use to prepare it. But that said, I do have five really important caveats you must hear regarding the raw food meal prep I just showed you. Number one, this is not a raw food menu plan or a raw dog food recipe intended for you to follow. This is me simply sharing one quick method of making 15 days of raw meals in bulk for two adult mastiffs. Number two, this is just one way to do it. If you ask a hundred raw feeders how to make raw dog food, I promise you, you will get a hundred other ways to do it. You have to do what's best for you and your dog. Number three, these meals are not complete. Did, did you experts hear me say that? The containers of raw meat and organ, as shown, lack a few essential nutrients. Therefore, they are not fed as is. Bone and other ingredients are added at mealtime to complete it. Number four, I am only showing a process for preparing one meal a day for my large dogs. 
Most dog owners will split their calculated daily totals, weight and calories, into two or more meals per day, depending upon the age of your dog or puppy. And lastly, number five, the amount of bone I'm feeding is an approximation. I shoot for 10 to 15% of my boy's diet to be raw meaty bones. The most obvious way to tell if dogs aren't getting enough bone or getting too much bone is to observe their stools daily. Depending on stool color and consistency, you will increase or decrease the amount of bone you are feeding. So what do you think? If you are just starting to learn how to make raw food for dogs, is this a method you would like to try? If you are an experienced raw feeder, what do you think? What is your preferred method of making your dog's raw food? Please share any tips you've learned in the comments below. Remember, there is more than one way to skin a cat. Sorry, cat lovers. <laughs> My sincere prayer is that you take this information not as gospel, but as food for thought. With that, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if you got value from this video and be sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on because I have tons more raw feeding content coming soon. And with that, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next video. Bye for now.